It's right there in front of you all the time you're driving, your instrument panel. And yet most of us basically just glance at speed and fuel and ignore the rest. Let's fix that as I show you how to really appreciate all the good data coming off your IP. Okay, the king of the instrument panel is the speedometer. It only has to show miles, by the way, in the US, not kilometers. Some cars will, but they don't have to. It can read to any speed that it wants. Some car makers will get all fancy on you and say, let's go up to like 220, or in this car, 200, like you'd ever do that. But this car could, so I guess that's credible, but not safe. Back in the early 80s, there was actually a US law that required speedometers read no higher than 85 miles per hour and had to have a separate emphasis on 55, the new low national speed limit, all to save fuel. It was all about getting folks to drive more slowly and save fuel. Those days are long gone, so speedometers can show wild speeds. They only have to be accurate within five miles per hour at 50 miles an hour. So don't be sitting there thinking this is gonna be your ironclad argument in court when you get a ticket. It can be off by a fair amount, especially on the freeway. Now next to your speedometer is your tachometer, and if the speedo is the king of the hill, the tack may be the joker. In most cars, there's no point in having it. It's there because it's great instrument theater. It moves a lot. It goes along with the engine sound. It makes you think your car is a little race car. But it's actually kind of useless for most driving, especially with an automatic transmission that you just keep in drive. For what it's worth, it shows how many revolutions per minute your engine is turning, and there's a red line. It's usually solid red, where the engine should never go, and either yellow or dotted red before that, where the engine really shouldn't go, and you shouldn't drive it that high. But again, with an automatic transmission, it's not up to you, and the car will handle itself. The fuel gauge needs almost no introduction. Of course, we all look at that all the time, especially when it's in the lower range. Know this about the fuel gauge, though. It almost always has a very conservative readout and reserve. So when you get down to the bottom there, know what your car's sort of color indication means, and then know that even when you're flat to the bottom, you probably have a couple gallons extra in reserve. Car makers have no interest in you running out of gas. It makes you hate your car. So they make it really hard to do so. Read your owner's manual to find that exactly where your reserve starts on the gauge and how much fuel there is at that point. Then there's the poor old temperature gauge. I say this with some sadness because some cars are getting rid of it. Partly because cars are so reliably engineered now, they just basically never overheat, and most folks never care about that gauge or look at it anyway. If you do have a car that has one though, note that the middle is usually normal, and that typically means around 190 degrees Fahrenheit is the coolant temperature in the engine. Again, this can be a little bit of who cares, because whether you've got a gauge or whether you've got a warning light, you're gonna know if the car's overheating and that's rarely gonna happen. At least a gauge will give you warning before it happens. The light may give you less of that. Now there's a couple of dreaded lights on the instrument panel, typically something along the lines of engine and check engine. Here's the difference on those. In just about every car, check engine means something to do with the emission system. The engine light tends to be more dire. That can indicate a bigger problem, including low oil pressure, because a long time ago, most cars got rid of oil pressure gauges. Oil pressure is key to keeping an engine lubricated so it doesn't seize or wear itself out very rapidly. So when you see an engine light or something like that, take heed, pull over, and figure it out. And finally, some cars that have so many LCDs now are taking advantage of them to add some virtual gauges over here that are a little less common. On this BMW, for example, we can get a real-time reading of horsepower and torque coming from the engine, the two indications of how much work it's doing. Now, what's going on here is very unnecessary. That's why most cars won't have this, but it goes to show you something. The car is a digital network these days, filled with sensors, and they could put up all kinds of indications on the screen should they want to. If you're really into that, check out our piece on using OBD2 adapters, a little dongle you stick under your dash, and that can turn your phone into an amazing ancillary instrument panel showing you stuff that car makers don't even put on the screen itself. Kind of cool if you're into that. <laughs>